So this is a video that I've been meaning to make for quite some time. You can tell it's going to be a serious video because I bothered to find a decent background. What made me make this video now was a Facebook argument. Basically there was an argument, more of a discussion I suppose, online about whether it is possible to buy your way into Oxford or Cambridge. And um, I wanted to make this video to try and clear a few things up because there is a really commonly held stereotype in this country, this, this belief that Oxford and Cambridge have emission systems which are tailored towards rich, posh people, and that every year in the Daily Mail you will have a story being run about somebody who's got 15 A stars at GCSE and 10 A's at A level and speaks six different languages and they still don't get in for their course of choice. And the argument is that it's not a fair system. And I'm going to try and argue that the system is not perfect, but the problems that we see are not coming from Oxbridge. To give you some statistics on the problem that we're working with, in 2013 Oxford released that it took 57% of its new intake of students that year from state schools. And when I say state, I mean comprehensive, grammar, sixth form colleges and academies and a few other institutions. And correspondingly that it took 43% from private schools. Now this is a problem because across the whole country 93% of all sixth form students are from state schools. And the average across all UK universities for state school entry was 88%. So there's a massive disparity between Oxford and other universities and Oxford and the national population. Now a few things to bear in mind for this video. Firstly, this is a hugely complicated issue and I can't hope to fully describe it in a short video. If you'd like more information on access generally I'd recommend you check out an interview I did with my friend Ryan Kemp. There will be a link to that in the description. Also to be completely transparent about my perspective on this, I am a successful applicant to Oxford. I went there in 2009 to study physics from a state comprehensive school and it wasn't a terrible school. We sent maybe one person a year to Oxford or Cambridge but that is naturally going to colour my opinion of the admissions process. So when we're talking about Oxbridge's admissions procedures, why do they need to be in there in the first place? Well, because there are far more applicants than there are actual places, more than 10 to 1 for most courses. And so there has to be some kind of selection process. Now, any selection process, whether you're selecting people or goods or anything, is open to bias. And that bias can be intentional or unintentional. My argument is that the bias which Oxford has is unintentional and it is minor, it is not the main cause of the problem. So if Oxbridge are picking students from a larger body of applicants, what are their selection criteria? What are they fundamentally looking for? What's in the university's best interests? Well, the things which all universities want are money and reputation. And so naturally, Oxbridge are going to want to choose the students which net them in the long run the most money and the most reputation. And who is going to do that? Well, they're going to want to choose the students which go through their system, come out the other end, and go on to make lots of money and go on to do great things. And those people are going to be the people who are best at their subjects. The people who are best at English and history are going to leave and go on to write the best novels and screenplays. The people who are best at economics are going to leave and make the most money. And that is what's going to benefit the university in the long term. The university, and this is not just from my personal opinion, but from multiple admissions personnel that I've talked to over the years, because I've done this for several years now, the university wants the best applicants for its courses. And that's as simple as it is. People might disagree with that assertion, but it is just the truth. So why then, if the selection process is just looking for the best students, are so many drawn from the private sector? Now as I say, this is a hugely complicated issue, but I'd like to highlight three socioeconomic causes for this. Firstly, and I realise this is quite a sweeping generalisation across a, a large spectrum of schools, if you go to a private school, or I'd also argue a grammar school, you will receive a higher quality of teaching and you'll be given access to more and better resources than if you go to a state comprehensive school, or a state school generally. What I mean by this is that if you take two people of identical ability in, in a particular subject and you put one through a private school and one for a state comprehensive school, more likely than not, the person who went to private school will come up with higher grades and better qualifications than the person who went to the state comprehensive. That's just the way the system works. In a sense, you get what you pay for. And yes, there is the point of natural talent, and I argue that that's more important in the sciences than in the humanities. But you need to be trained to use that talent. You need to be taught techniques, academic discipline. You need to be taught how to apply yourself to problems. And that is just more likely to happen in a private school than in a state school. Secondly, by going to a private school, and again, arguably a grammar school as well, you are part of a community which has sent successfully applicants to Oxford and Cambridge before. And because of that, you'll be able to ask those successful applicants questions. You're going to be able to ask them about their interviews, the questions that they were given. You're going to be able to ask them, how did you feel those questions? What did you wear? How did you prepare? You're more likely to succeed by merit of drawing from other people's successes. 
It's a positive feedback where success breeds success. And if you go to a state school where no one's ever gone to Oxbridge before, then unless you go to an official university event, you're not going to have the opportunity to talk to a successful applicant. Add this into the fact that I know some private schools have members of staff who are solely there to coach people to get into Oxbridge. There's a whole raft of advantages beside the academic, which are given to people who go to paid schools than people who go to comprehensive schools just don't have access to. Thirdly, and more of a psychological or a cultural issue, if you go to a school, as I mentioned before, that hasn't ever sent anyone to Oxbridge before, you're more likely to think that it's just not worth your time, that it's impossible, that how could I ever get in because, you know, it's for other people. Whereas if you go to a school that has successfully sent applicants before, you're more likely to at least apply. And frankly, that's half the battle, because if you don't apply, you're not going to get in. As I say, though, this is a hugely complicated issue, and these are only three of the issues at hand. But these are issues which Oxford and Cambridge every year actively try and combat. They go out there and they do access initiatives, outreach schemes. They are not obliged to do this. They are going out there and marketing themselves to state school students because they want the best applicants. As a matter of fact, only I only applied to Oxford because I went to some of these events. I even went on a summer school and it made me think, yeah, you know what? I can maybe get in. These universities are not trying to con anyone into thinking that they care about state school students. They do, because they want the best applicants, because they want the best students to go there. But that said, the admissions process is not completely unbiased. As I mentioned before, any selection process is going to have an inherent bias, whether that's intentional or not. And the Oxford system does have a bias towards people who are good at interviews. The Oxbridge system, in case you don't know, is that an applicant will be given several one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two interviews with world-leading academics, and in some subjects, like physics, you also do an aptitude test. Now, by doing these interviews, you are actively favouring people who are good at interviews. And people might be good at interviews because, as in some schools, they are coached to get through their interviews. They may be good at interviews because they have been given tips by people who have gone from their school before. In short, it is this positive feedback that if you go to a school that has sent people successfully through interviews, you are more likely yourself to be successful at interview. So why do Oxbridge insist on using this interview system? Well, because sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a world-leading academic is how the most important part of the teaching at Oxbridge is done, the tutorial or the supervision system. And the universities are going to be choosing people that will thrive in that teaching environment. They want to choose people that are going to be communicative that can articulate their thought processes to their tutors. Because if they can't do that, then how would they benefit from being in a tutorial? If you go to an interview and you can't do that, then that's telling you that you would actually be happier and would do better at a university which uses more centralised teaching. So the university does use a system of admissions which is slightly biased, but it's biased with reason. And that bias is not what causes these huge statistical discrepancies that are reported every year. Basically, what I've tried to argue, and I hope I've convinced you, is that the universities are not at fault for these statistics. Yes, there is some inherent bias in the selection process, as with any selection process. But the fault is in the wider education system in this country. And that's an issue which I, I can't even begin to talk about, I'm not even qualified to begin talking about. But just take away from this video, please, that Oxbridge is doing all it can to try and ameliorate the situation. But it's a big problem and it needs time. And it's not going to get better anytime soon. Thank you for watching. This video has been very important to me because it's uh, been a big issue in my life. But I would really, really like to hear from you guys. Please leave in the comments if you have applied to Oxbridge, uh, successfully or unsuccessfully, and leave your experiences of applying. Do you think the admissions process was fair? Do you think it unfairly favoured people? If you haven't applied yet. What is the culture in your school? Do you think people think they can get into Oxbridge? Is, have you had successful applicants in the past? I suppose more importantly, do you think I'm right? Do you think that Oxbridge is fair in its admissions process? I'd really, really be interested to hear from you. Thanks for watching.